Hello everyone. Today is March 5th, 2015. This is the short version of the UTEL water supply briefing. My name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist with the National Weather Service here in Salt Lake City. So let's get to it. Let's look at the weather patterns and the precip anomalies that accompanied those weather patterns. So when we look at February 19th, this weather feature right here is, is a high pressure that has dominated our weather really for the past four years. It's taken different shapes, different positions, but essentially it rotates clockwise right over the west and it shunts any of the weather up farther north. And when you look at the jet stream, it, it comes down and then the southeast and then goes up on the east coast. And the, the origin of this air mass is this frigid north pole coming out of the Arctic and dropping down. This is why the eastern part of the U.S. has so much snow, so much cold, and the west over in this area has been so dry. But then on about February 23rd, we had a shift, which was very nice. Here's the high right here playing an insignificant role. And then you see the jet dropping down here into a low pressure, which rotates counterclockwise. This went out over the Pacific, picked up some good moisture, and then came into southern Utah in the desert southwest and had the start of a, a pretty good storm cycle really all the way through February and into March. When we look at the total precip anomaly for February, what we see are numbers that don't look all that great, but this could have been much worse with the exception of that storm system that moved in. And we have parts of uh, southeast Utah that are above average as a result of that storm. We, when we then shift and look at March 2nd, a continuation of that storm, here's that low out over the Pacific, comes back up, brings moisture with it, um, did a very good job, lots of, lots of storminess, lots of snow, and really this part of the jet that came down put some pretty good snow, maybe an inch of water in the northern parts of Utah, which helped help the skiing, help the water supply. But this feature here really put down about four to five inches of water in southern Utah. And this is the result. When you look at the total precip anomaly from March 1st through March 3rd, what we see are numbers that are up around you know, maybe 400% of average for those days that we're looking at. And it's really just an illustration of where it, it rained and it snowed a lot, and that was very helpful during that time. When we look at the temperature anomaly uh, for really the water year, starting on October 1st and going all the way through March 4th, and we're, we're looking at Salt Lake City Airport and the departure of normal. All the bars going up are above normal temperatures. All the bars going down are below average temperatures. And something to draw your attention to, during this period of December, it was the warmest first 13 days of December we've ever seen going back to 1874 when we started taking records. Doesn't mean it was warm on 1874. It meant that's when we started. So who knows how long this record has been going. But it was on average 14 degrees above average. And then we had 48 consecutive days above normal really starting sometime around uh, the beginning of January and going for the next 48 days consecutively. And this is the period that we are trying to build a snowpack. We are trying to get a lot of storm activity. And during this time, the high pressure dominated, lots of solar radiation, very hot temperatures, absence of storm activity. And this was very tough to take for the water supply community. But then when you look at February on just the month itself in Salt Lake, it was the hottest February on record, 9.7 degrees above average during this time frame. And here's the daily mean temperature anomaly. You can see the eastern part of the U.S. is cold. The western is very dry, and that's a direct result of where that jet stream came swooping down to the southeast and up the east coast, and the west part of the U.S. was shut out due to that high circulating right over it. When we look at current snowpack comparisons, the percentage of normal for snowpack on March 5, 2015 illustrates that the Great Basin, or where most people live in Utah, have very low snowpacks. Uh, we have 64% in the Bear, 69% in the Weaver. Six Creeks is currently at 59%, the Utah uh, Lake area at 61%. But if you look in the Upper Green at 126%, it's doing quite well. Moving over into the headwaters of the Colorado, the Yampa at 83, 86% for the Eagle area. And then the main stem down in the Gunnison at 86% and the Dolores at 104. And if you go a little bit farther south, the San Juan not doing so well. Um, but these numbers down in the Virgin, the Severe, and parts of Lake Powell, these percentages increased 40 to 50% due to that storm activity at uh, the end of February and into March. So a great improvement with snow down in, in the southern Utah. When you look at the spring snowmelt runoff volume forecast made by 
Colorado Basin and River Forecast Center, which is part of the National Weather Service, we see that the areas on the western edge of our area are much below normal. This is the volume forecast of water coming out of the mountains from April 1st through the end of July. And you can see we're near 50% in many of these areas. Six Creeks, which are the mountains just to the east of Salt Lake County, is at 40%. Uh, down in the Virgin at 45%. And these forecasts were made uh, before a good chunk of that snow occurred in, in these areas. So my feeling is these are going to bump up a little bit, but then we have high pressure really forecasted out for seven days. The ridge is going to build back in. If you look at the upper Colorado and these areas here, all much healthier than what we see in the western part. So there you have it. That's Brian McInerney with the National Weather Service. I'm the hydrologist. There's my contact info. If I can do anything else for you, let me know. And until the next briefing, which will be next month, uh, we'll go from there. Thank you.